بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's lesson which is the uh, listening and pronunciation from unit 4 So today we'll be listening to a conversation maybe to someone who's talking about something So in the beginning of this lesson I have to tell you to prepare your uh, paper or p and pen and pencil to take your notes. Each listening, you have to, to take notes to, tell, to try to answer the questions also. But before we do that, let's revise what we uh, previously talked in the conversation. If you remember, we, t we were talking about the figure skating, and these are the skates for figure skating. They're not like hockey skates. They're not like speed skates. So this is figure skating, the design and the tips of the blades. So these are called the blades and underneath the shoe, these are called the blades. Again, figure skating, the design and the tips of the blades show that these are figure skates, not speed skates or hockey skates. Of course, then we listen to the conversation between the coach and Barry. Barry was about to enter a competition. He was extremely nervous that he forgot his shoe, his shoes, uh, his skates in the car. But uh, he lost confidence in himself just before the competition. Then his coach uh, gave him a, a speech, uh, trying, trying to uh, put some confidence in himself. Of course, he succeeded. He said, I have total confidence in you. You can do it. You're going to knock their, sec uh, the, their socks off and so on. At the end, of course, uh, Barry gained his uh, confidence in, him, in himself. He said, OK, I feel better. I'm psyched. He said, I'm psyched, which means that now I'm excited mentally and, of course, uh, physically ready. So this is the real talk. Up for, ready for something. If you're up for, uh, up for something, it means that you are ready for it. Are you up for a game of basketball? Are you up for a game of football? It means that are you ready? Mess up, make a mistake. If you remember, Barry is saying when he was nervous in the beginning, he said, I'm afraid I'm going to mess things up. I'm going to uh, mess up to make mistakes. Uh, down pat at the point of perfection. Down pat at the point of perfection. You bet. It means, of course. It means, of course, you're agreeing with someone. Did you like the movie? You bet. It means, yes. Also, guts means courage. Psyched, as I mentioned earlier, means excited and psychologically uh, prepared. Then we took this chart. This is an extremely important chart of how to express your encouragement and your confidence in someone. When you want to encourage your friend, you want to put some confidence in him. How, what, what do you say? This chart will uh, help you. You can say, I know you can do it. I have total confidence in you, of course. I have confidence or faith in you. Or, or you can say, I have total confidence in you just like the coach said. There's no question in my mind that you can do it. You've got what it takes. You've got what it takes. You'll do great. Don't worry. You'll do great. You're going to knock them dead or you're going to knock their socks off. You're going to knock them dead or you can say you're going to knock their socks off. All of these are uh, things to say when you want to encourage someone or to express your confidence uh, in them. These are today's objectives for the listening. Elicit an athlete personal information from an audio. Differentiate between pronunciations of the letters T, H. So we're going to have different pronunciations of the letters T and uh, H. Find the meaning of the new words in the text. So, is it possible to enjoy or even play a sport if you aren't even very good at it? Again, this is a question. Is it possible to enjoy or even play a sport if you're not very good at it? To play or enjoy watching if you're not very good at it? For me, yes. If I'm not good at some certain sport, it doesn't mean that I don't enjoy playing it or even watching it, just like uh, football. So you're going to hear two stories about athletes who weren't the best in their sports, 
but but uh, they kept competing again you're going to hear two stories about athletes who weren't who weren't the best in their sports but they kept competing so even if you're not the best you have to keep you have to keep competing so we listen now and remember take notes while listening prepare your pens or pencils with a piece of paper to take notes to what you're going to uh, listen so listen to the profiles of unusual Olymp olympic athletes and complete the chart listen to the profiles to of unusual Olympic athletes and complete the chart. We have this chart of Eddie Edwards and Eric Musambani. Uh, the nickname, so we're going to listen to their nicknames and the sport, what did they play and their country. The Olympics, which year and which city. So you have to pay attention and take notes about these details in the chart. Don't take don't write in your notes everything that you hear. Of course, you can't. Just write the specific information that you're looking for in, the, uh, uh, in this listening. The challenges, what were the difficulties that they faced, and the results. At the end, what happened. Again, Eddie Edwards and Eric Musambani, their nickname, what did people call them, the sports they played, their country, when they played the Olympics, which city and which year, the challenges that they have faced, and also the results. So let's listen now. Now just listen. Later we'll be listening and filling the uh, chart. So now just listen and try to make uh, to write notes as much as, about, uh, as you can, just about this specific information. So let's listen. The Olympic Games are usually a celebration of the finest in athletic ability. But every so often an Olympic athlete becomes famous not for being athletically gifted but for not being athletically gifted. Take Eddie the Eagle Edwards, for example. Edwards was the first person to represent Great Britain in the Olympic ski jumping event. Edwards, who had only practiced the sport for two seasons, qualified for the 1988 Winter Olympics in Calgary simply because he was the only one who applied. Edwards was 20 pounds heavier than the next heaviest competitor and was extremely nearsighted. His glasses fogged up so badly when he skied that he couldn't see. It was no surprise that Edwards finished last in his event. However, being a spectacular failure made Edwards more famous than many Olympic winners. After the Olympics, Edwards became a media sensation, appearing on talk shows around the world. Another Olympic athlete who gained fame for his lack of skill is Eric the Eel Moussambani. Moussambani was a swimmer from Equatorial Guinea who participated in the 2000 Summer Olympics in Sydney, Australia. Moussambani had only started swimming eight months prior to the Olympics. Before he arrived at the Games he had never even seen an Olympic-sized pool. Moussambani was to compete against two other swimmers. Incredibly, both were disqualified for jumping into the pool before the start of the race. Eric struggled so badly to complete the 100-meter swim that some people worried he might even be drowning. When Eric finally finished the race, the audience cheered wildly. It wasn't his time that impressed the spectators. After all, he finished a full minute behind any competitive time. It was his perseverance and determination that was so impressive. So now that we have listened to the two stories about uh, Eddie Edwards and Eric Musambani, of course, you have took some notes. You have took some notes, of course, about each and every detail here, their nickname, the sport they're competing in, which country are they from, the Olympics, which city, which year, and the challenges that they have faced, and the uh, results. So now listen again, but this time, while you're listening, try to complete the chart. Again, listen and complete the chart. So now, after you've written some notes, listen again, and once we, you have finished listening, try to complete the chart. So let's listen again. The Olympic Games are usually a celebration of the finest in athletic ability. 
But every so often an Olympic athlete becomes famous not for being athletically gifted but for not being athletically gifted. Take Eddie the Eagle Edwards, for example. Edwards was the first person to represent Great Britain in the Olympic ski jumping event. Edwards, who had only practiced the sport for two seasons, qualified for the 1988 Winter Olympics in Calgary simply because he was the only one who applied. Edwards was 20 pounds heavier than the next heaviest competitor and was extremely nearsighted. His glasses fogged up so badly when he skied that he couldn't see. It was no surprise that Edwards finished last in his event. However, being a spectacular failure made Edwards more famous than many Olympic winners. After the Olympics, Edwards became a media sensation, appearing on talk shows around the world. Another Olympic athlete who gained fame for his lack of skill is Eric the Eel Moussambani. Moussambani was a swimmer from Equatorial Guinea who participated in the 2000 Summer Olympics in Sydney, Australia. Moussambani had only started swimming eight months prior to the Olympics. Before he arrived at the Games he had never even seen an Olympic-sized pool. Moussambani was to compete against two other swimmers. Incredibly, both were disqualified for jumping into the pool before the start of the race. Eric struggled so badly to complete the 100-meter swim that some people worried he might even be drowning. When Eric finally finished the race, the audience cheered wildly. It wasn't his time that impressed the spectators. After all, he finished a full minute behind any competitive time. It was his perseverance and determination that were so impressive. So now that we have listened again to the, all the specific information, so let's take Eddie Edwards. What was his nickname? What was his nickname? Let's see the answer here. It was the Eagle. And if you can, if you remember, they put the nickname between his uh, first name and last name. They said Eddie the Eagle Edwards. If you listen again, we will listen again later. Just listen again to the name. They said Eddie the Eagle Edwards. So sometimes they put the nickname in between the first and the last name. What about the sport? What, were, what sport did Eddie compete in? So let's see the answer here. Ski jumping. It was ski jumping. So what was the country? Where is Eddie from? Where is Eddie from? Let's check the correct answer here. He's from Great Britain. He's from Great Britain. And which city and year the Olympics that he participated in? Which city and which year was it? Okay, let's see the correct answer here. 1988 in Cagliari. 1988 in Cagliari. Uh, challenging. What were the challenging that the challenges that faced him? Of course, he faced some challenges. What were they? Of course, you can notice here challenges in plural, not just one challenge, many difficulties, many challenges. Let's see the answer here. Heavier than competitors. He was heavier than other com uh, competitors. Of course, uh, ski jumping, you have to be really light in weight, B but he was heavier. He was nearsighted. He couldn't see well. He was nearsighted, only participated for two seasons. So he wasn't that, uh, he, he doesn't have that much of an experience. So the challenge is he was heavier than other competitors. He was nearsighted and he only participated for just two seasons. So after all these difficulties, what was or what were the results? What were the results? Did he win? Of course, he didn't. He finished last in the event. Actually, this is what made him famous, that he finished uh, last. So he finished last in the event. So again, Eddie Edwards, the eagle, ski jumping, the sport, the country was Great Britain, the Olympics, 1988 in Cagliari, the challenges heavier than competitors, nearsighted, only participated for two seasons, and the result that he finished last in the event. What about Eric Musambani? What was his nickname? Eric here. Let's see the correct answer here. The eel. 
So the eel, the sport. From the nickname, I think you can guess the sport here. That's correct, swimming. What about the country? What about the country? Where is Eric from? Yes, from, uh, from the Equatorial Guinea. From the Equatorial Guinea. The Olympics, which year and which city? Which year and which city did he participate in? Let's see the correct answer here. 2000 Sydney, in the 2000 Olympics, Olympics in Sydney. So what were the challenges that he faced? That what were the challenges that Eric faced here? Of course, he uh, just, uh, just as uh, Eddie here, Eric faced many challenges. What were they? So let's see the, the correct answer here. Only been swimming for eight months. He all, he's only been practicing or swimming just for eight months. Never seen an Olympic-sized pool. So he's new there. He, he didn't even see an Olympic-sized pool. So at the end, what was the result? Did he finish first? Did he win any medals? So the results are, of course, he finished a full minute behind any competitive time. So he didn't just finish last. He finished last with honors, of course, that he finished a full minute behind any competitive time. So he was really slow because he's new to the uh, sport. So these are the answers. So let's listen again and check if you wrote the correct answer. Let's listen again. The Olympic Games are usually a celebration of the finest in athletic ability. But every so often an Olympic athlete becomes famous not for being athletically gifted but for not being athletically gifted. Take Eddie the Eagle Edwards, for example. Edwards was the first person to represent Great Britain in the Olympic ski jumping event. Edwards, who had only practiced the sport for two seasons, qualified for the 1988 Winter Olympics in Calgary simply because he was the only one who applied. Edwards was 20 pounds heavier than the next heaviest competitor and was extremely nearsighted. His glasses fogged up so badly when he skied that he couldn't see. It was no surprise that Edwards finished last in his event. However, being a spectacular failure made Edwards more famous than many Olympic winners. After the Olympics, Edwards became a media sensation, appearing on talk shows around the world. Another Olympic athlete who gained fame for his lack of skill is Eric the Eel Moussambani. Moussambani was a swimmer from Equatorial Guinea who participated in the 2000 Summer Olympics in Sydney, Australia. Moussambani had only started swimming eight months prior to the Olympics. Before he arrived at the Games he had never even seen an Olympic-sized pool. Moussambani was to compete against two other swimmers. Incredibly, both were disqualified for jumping into the pool before the start of the race. Eric struggled so badly to complete the 100-meter swim that some people worried he might even be drowning. When Eric finally finished the race, the audience cheered wildly. It wasn't his time that impressed the spectators. After all, he finished a full minute behind any competitive time. It was his perseverance and determination that was so impressive. So now I think that you all got the correct answer, even after we have uh, checked the answer. So jumping on to the pronunciation part, in English, the letters T and H, the letters here, T and H can have different pronunciations. So if you have the letter T and the letter H, they have two different pronunciations. In the word thank, the th sound doesn't have a vibration. When you say th, th, nothing vibrates here. In the words them, in the word them, the th sound here does have a vibration. So when you say the, th, so there's a vibration here. Actually, you can feel the vibration. Unlike when you say th, th there's no vibration. Listen and, and, uh, and identify the TH sound. So number one, every so often the Olympi uh, an Olympic athlete becomes famous 
not for being athletically gifted, but for not being athletically gifted. So here the TH is the TH sound without any vibration. Number two, take Eddie the Eagle. Eddie the, the Eagle Edwards, for example. So number two, Eddie the Eagle, the th sound, of course. You can feel the vibrations here. Eddie the Eagle Edwards, for example. Number three, Edwards was two, two, uh, 20 pounds or nine kilograms heavier than the next heaviest competitor. So heavier than the next, the same pronunciation here with vibrations, of course. He wore his glasses even though they fogged up badly. Even though they. So these both uh, have vibrations in them. Number five, Eddie is easily the worst ski jumper that has ever competed in the Olympics. So Eddie is easily the worst ski jumper that has ever competed in the Olympics. They are all the same pronunciation here with vibrations. Another example of, uh, of Olympic athlete who gained fame for his lack of skill is Eric the Eel Musambani. So athlete here, the th sound, the th, just try to practice with me here, say th. You can feel there's no vibrations at all. Unlike when you say th, you can feel the vibrations here. There's a fun fact for you. Everyone was surprised when Jamaica, a country with no snow, of course we know Jama Jamaica doesn't have any snow, entered a team in a bobsled competition in the 1988 Winter Olympics. That year, the Jamaicans didn't finish any of their races. They crashed before the end of, the, of each race. But in 1992, they came in 14th ahead of the U.S team and with that we reach the end of this lesson see you next lesson insha'Allah subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashadu ala lant astaghfirka wa tubu ilayk assalamu alaikum